Hello and welcome to Talk Sports Cricket YouTube channel. Sam Ellard and Cameron Ponsonby at the Brian Lara Cricket Academy just moments after the West Indies beat England by four wickets to seal a victory in the match and also a, uh, a series victory. West Indies three, England two, it finishes. England gave it a good go. The West Indies chasing down 133, winning by four wickets into the final over. A low scoring game of cricket, but an entertaining entertaining game of cricket even. And Cameron Punzenby is, is alongside me. Um, different, but just as entertaining. No, I'd prefer 267. <laughs> that was amazing. The, other match, the match the other day was incredible. This was very entertaining as well. Uh, England have fallen the wrong side of the result. Again, it kind of feels like the same message we've been told throughout the tour. Don't worry about losing, it's fine. Like the process is right, it doesn't matter about the result. And um, to be honest, I bought that with the ODI series. I, I feel like I'm being gaslit a little bit with the T20 side. The message we're getting is that this is an inexperienced, newish group. Eight of the players who played today were in this starting 11 for the World Cup final a year ago. Like this, this is basically what the World Cup squad is going to be in six months' time. I just don't think you can. But well, sure, I think just to interrupt yeah. you. We should say, hopefully, Jofra Archer is included. Yeah. Hopefully, Ben Stokes is included. They have the options of Johnny Bairstow and Mark Wood. Certainly, the first two. They're they're pretty big. They're pretty big players to be bringing back into a team. No, absolutely. But if you are going along the lines of four, there are four players to come back into this team. And there are only three players who played today who didn't play in the World Cup final last year. You're pretty much at full strength because even one of those four that we've mentioned would still have to sit out or another World Cup winner would have to sit out. I just think it's very... It's, I think this, this T20 team is being held to the standard of the ODI World Cup and not the group that they are themselves. In the context of the ODI World Cup, sure, we've had five interesting T20s. There has been learning here in that they lost the first two and they went, look, you can't play like this in the Caribbean. We need to change our style of play. And they won two of the following three. Brilliant, especially six months out from a World Cup. If you had two pre-season friendlies and lost and then you turned it around when it, was, when it mattered, you consider that a success. But I still just can't quite wrap my head around how a group that is literally reigning world champions are holding themselves to a standard where publicly at least they're saying it's fine this is okay we've lost and i just think like if if if, if they're gonna if, if on the one hand winning is a habit and so too is losing yeah and i think that's fair i think england probably have gone to a habit of losing I mean, there's been a lot of games on this tour as you rightly mentioned that have been close games of cricket but it feels like england have just lost game they've got they've been in good positions in a lot of games and lost so you're not as convinced that england are okay as what just butler's just told you how far away then are they? Because they haven't got many matches left, do they, as a team yeah. before the T20 World Cup. How far away are they from being a team that can come here and win? And if they're far away, what do they need to do or who do they need to bring in to make this team potential star that can win this competition? Yeah, and I think this is where I'm going to contradict myself a little bit here. And you need to, like, if you think I'm being too harsh, like, tell me. No, be honest. But I don't, I don't have a problem with where the team is. I don't have a problem with how they're playing. I think this is a fantastic team. And that's why I'm so confused about what the messaging is. That's, that's all it is really for me, is a case of surely, when we had Moen Ali come and talk to us after the second ODI, he was like tangibly irritated. You could see he was T20. Kind of, yeah, T20. He, he was ticking. Phil, we spoke to Phil Salt after the third one, and he was saying, yeah, no team's ever happy when they're losing. And that was kind of a more reflective, genuine, I think, sentiment from the group. I think maybe I'm just getting confused at the kind of, the element of like media control where it's like oh no we're happy with how things are going at the moment and i'm like well, well why sure surely you can surely you can be like we're really annoyed and really upset to lose it's not good enough it's not the stand we hold ourselves to but we feel really close i think that's where my irritation well, you've probably lies. done enough of these interviews though to know that sometimes you know what will the headlines be if after halfway through the series Josh butler comes out and slams this england flops you know come on you must no, have done I... enough of these i'm sure joss just strikes me as a super, super, super competitive bloke. Yeah, exactly. So he might come out here and look you in the eye and go, oh yeah, it's been good progress, but he's not stupid, is he? Well, no, that's, that's exactly my point. I think that's where we realized that with the ODI team, when they lost the first one, and they were very, very nicey, nicey after they lost. And it was like, okay, this is a new era. I actually believe this now because this is a new group. Not a new era, as you said, to the players yeah, are the same, no, aren't I, they? I think the ODI group is a new group. I think the ODI group's a new group. I think the T20 yeah. one is not. And then, but go, go back to the World Cup. Do you remember when Ben Stokes gave the interview and he just went, he was like, what's been wrong? He's like, oh, we've, we've been crap. Yeah. I, I wasn't really sure if that would make the cut or not. No, well, you, I think you could have said he said the S word. That would have been no, fine. No, he didn't. He said the C word, the CR. Oh, that sorry. Yeah. Oh, I thought he said the S word. No, no, oh, my bad. Apologies. Very, very sensible man is Benjamin Stokes. Very well media trained, clearly. Well exactly. done, Danny Rubin. And um, 
And I think that goes. I think that like comes across really well because it's a very genuine kind of. It's, po- honest, it? it's an honest. It's an honest statement. That was the whole thing from the World Cup. Is the gossip was kind of that there wasn't any gossip. The team was trying hard. They're all together. It was just maybe they're at the end of the road or whatever. And that can be true though as well, right? They've had so much good times together. It's hard to win exactly. every World Cup, right? I 100% buy into. I 100% agree with that. I think that's a very honest assessment from Ben Stokes. And I, that's why I'm just confused about this T20 series. Cameron, what are the what, what are the biggest concerns for England coming out of this series, going into the new year? What haven't you liked about what you've seen from this team over the past couple of weeks? I think I had a worry at the beginning of the series that they had in the first three T20s, they had three completely different team makeups. So they changed from Ben Duckett to Moeen Ali after the first one. And Matthew Mott said yesterday that was basically a case of him and Butler going, you know what, we've got the team balance wrong. We don't think this is the right way to go about T20 cricket in the Caribbean. And then after this... Basically, Ben Duckett can't hit hard enough early on in his innings, essentially. Well, Ben, a little bit on Ben Duckett, but also they wanted another bowling option and to, to contest the kind of power of the West Indies. Then they lost the second one and they changed again. They went Atkinson and Topley in for Wokes and Ahmed, I want to say. Ryan, yeah, it was. And that really abandoned their previous, like, kind of white ball mantra of batting really deep. Like, Gus Atkinson started this tour at number 11 in the ODIs. He was finishing at Stop, everything's eight. about Gus, isn't it? Oh, oh Gus no. this, Gus that. Oh I, oh, I did an hour of Gus yesterday. Look out for that in the new year. You might as well plug it now. Come on. Head of the Test Series, ESPN Quick Info. Atkinson meets Pons and me. The two Bezzies are reunited and it feels so... Sorry, you're actually making a really good point then. Um, I'll go Curran instead. Curran batted at eight and powered at four. But the Curran can do that. That's a bad, worst point. Um, and so I was kind of wasn't really sure where their kind of ducks were falling in a row. I think that's a phrase. And then, but on the flip side, you could then, you could then I imagine Matthew Mott would say to me, but then we came to the con- conclusion we wanted to. We've won two out of the following three. And we are actually in a position where we feel quite strong going forward. I think... Maybe I'm being too pedantic, maybe I'm being too precious, but I think my problem with the England team isn't with the England team at all. I think they're a fantastic team and I think they'll do very, very well in the World Cup and they'll be much, much better for having played five matches here. My frustration is that a team that that was double world champions are publicly at least kind of like saying it's, oh, we're chilled with the defeat kind of thing. That, 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 I find that bizarre. I guess the biggest positive is obviously the bloke at the top of the order who, and for some reason, didn't score 100 today, which I'm not really sure why oh, he didn't, didn't score 100. Why did, I mean, why did he no. get out rather than I just keeping the ball? I think, I think Phil Salt should be dropped from this team personally I for agree. not scoring another I 100. Um, but Butler, yeah. Salt, I guess, have obviously cemented themselves as one yeah. and two. Maybe Jackson, uh, three as well. Then I, I like Liam Livingston batting high up the yeah, order. I've, I've always thought he's one of our best players. I've never been, I've always, I, I, I feel like when he comes in at six and seven, he just doesn't face enough balls for a player of his quality. We know of Harry Brooks' quality. Then I guess you're looking maybe at Mo and Ali and of course Ben Stokes coming back. That I guess looks one of the best, if not the best top six on, or top seven even on paper. Mate, it's an amazing team. This is kind of the, the I, hope I'm, I hope I'm putting this point across that I do think this England team are amazing and that's why I'm confused. Look, that, yeah. That's what's frustrating yeah. as a f- fly goes my eye. Yeah. That's what's frustrating is that it is a great team. It's yeah. not like there's 11 useless cricketers out there. Yeah, yeah. They get them beaten and you go, okay. We know it's a team stacked full of world-class cricketers who have just, they're just not exec- they haven't executed that their is. skills well enough over yeah. the last week, couple of weeks. But then as you, as you say, that top six, top seven, you're probably going to have Bairstow maybe come in at three for Will Jacks. He'll probably be, be the one who ends up missing out. Wait, Phil Salt's Sol- not going anywhere. Josh Butler's should, not going anywhere. Should Will anywhere. Jacks go anywhere? Well, if it's a choice between him and Salt. This no, him and Bairstow. Him and Bairstow. Oh, Obviously, Salt's like one it. and two. I'm, I'm, I think it might go Jacks at three. Wow. I think he's a gun player. Are you dropping I really think, yeah, I think I am dropping Bairstow. I like Jacks. I, I think Jacks. I feel a bit sorry for him because I yeah. actually thought coming into this series that he was going to be the guy that would go yeah. with Butler at the top and it could have been him scoring those hundreds. Obviously, Salt's got to play now and I'm happy yeah. for Salt. But I don't know, feel like every time Jacks is almost there to cement himself as the opener, he either gets dropped or someone else yeah. comes in. I don't know, I, I'd like them to go Jacks at three and say, you're our number three now, go, you're our guy. The roles have reversed a little bit in that kind of coming into this West Indian series, like ODI series, anti-20, probably Jacks was a little bit ahead of Salt and that's definitely I flipped on this so, point. And similarly in the kind of ODIs, Jacks had the kind of more actual scores to his name. He got 90 against Ireland, he scored, he scored a few half centuries and Salt hadn't had that and now that's kind of swapped. But Will Jacks is... So, I, Will Jackson is going to play in this white ball team, these white ball teams for the next like five, ten years. Like, he's such a good player, so strong with the bat, is able to bowl very, very good off spin, more than kind of part time off spin. Um, well, he made your list, your tweet today, didn't he? List of 
options. Butler has got with the ball. Yeah. Poor Liam Livingston didn't Poor make Liam it though, did it? I forgot Liam Livingston. To be fair, Butler didn't give him a bowl either today. So me, me and Joss actually talk quite a lot about our bowling strategies. But I agree well, with Well, I, I wouldn't brag about that at the moment, the way, the way Butler. <laughs> you've just slagged him off for 10 minutes and you got, well, I'm, I'm, just, in, I'm just in sync with Butler. Yeah, yeah, no, that's a good point actually. But uh, um, I agree with you. I think Liam Livingston at four is just looks better. It's more exciting when he comes out. You're like, oh. Because like, Liam Livingston's bat swing is one of the, I think it's my favourite in the game. I, think, I know it's really nerdy. No, I agree with you. But like, he just tries to. Out I told this story um, to someone else, but there was. I remember a journalist, a colleague, telling me a, t a story about. Name drop. Uh, just a colleague, actually. Oh, okay. And. Um, he read it on Twitter, basically. <laughs> no, 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 no. And he told me that he, he, he was tasked to go out and like interview, do a really technical interview with Liam Livingston about like how he generates his power and what he's thinking about and his kind of hit rate. Sounds about a loss. Exactly, <laughs> and we get we, he got there and he was like, right, Liam, like, talk me through your process. And Livingston was just like, mate, I just try and whack it as hard as I can. And they're like, no, 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 but like, how do you? He's like, no, 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 let me finish. I just try and hit every ball as hard as I can. And you can see that when he plays, it's a proper baseball like golf club yeah. swing. Yeah. Um, and I think England are much. They look. It looks like a a team that can potentially get a higher total those two sixties with him at four rather than like saving him for the back end. We've got to wrap up soon because we've got a mini bus to get on. Um, the West Indies, yep. I feels like they could win the World Cup at a canter or lose all of their games in the group. And they go, it feels like there's no in between with them. They're going to be either bloody brilliant and destructive, yep. like we've seen, or also they could just turn up one day and be absolutely rank. It feels like there's going to be nowhere in the middle. I, I, I like them, man. It's good. And this, this, this you means, like what? I like them. I like yeah, them. They're likable guys, aren't they? They're Shea Hope's great, by the way. I said to him in an interview, I said, you're a very good batsman, you're a very good man, and you're very good looking. Did he enjoy it? Did he take it well? He said, I think it's all true apart from the last one. Oh. And he's also very modest. He is good looking. Oh, I fancy him even more now. That's yeah, what no, an answer. No. Why can't he be English? I know, Imagine man. how cool it would be if Shea Hope played for England. Oh, goodness me. And he's been, I think he, get, get, he's changed really drastically as a player over mm. the last... Um, Kind of year or so, he's really added a, like a power element to his game because before we basically batted like he did today, where he kind of cruised people home in third gear. But I think the West Indies on these wickets, where they're slow, difficult to bat on, they'll be really difficult to beat because their bowling their bowling tack suits those surfaces, and their batting unit is just stronger than everyone else. Why in the is world. the bowling? Because they've got the two spinners who are brilliant. They've got the two sp spinners who are kind of just awkward to face. Basically, they're kind of not anything miraculous but they I kind of think of them as you know when you're watching a movie and like the the sounds a little bit out and out of sync with the pictures yeah. and things are just arriving kind of not when you quite anticipate it they're just on a slight delay basically <laughs> I think that's good I, in the, that makes sense in my head that genuinely what? makes sense in my head oh, we'll leave we'll leave it to the comments if that makes any sense um and then on, on the, the seamers they were kind of really like slow into the wicket difficult deliveries to hit on the flip side when you then go on a, like a, a flat track like we had in the last two matches they might get absolutely pumped, man. Like they, they have no like mystery spinner. They have no express pace, and then it'll, then it'll just be a case of can they out six you? I think they'll be such an enjoyable team to watch across the World Cup. I'd love it if they did really well. I'd love it if they kept, went. If on. England don't win it, who do you want to win it? West Who's Indies. Like, really? Because I, I think also for the idea, that I think I mean we've been here for the last month or whatever it is, and this idea three and a half weeks, three and a half weeks, and um, not quite a month. <laughs> and this idea that um, kind of cricket in the Caribbean is kind of on its like death knell. Yes, it's obviously not at the heights it once was, especially on the pitch. Test cricket is though, but the white ball stuff's different, right? Correct. But if we, if, if I'll tell you what, the, if we, those lads that go to Australia for the Test series, oh God, the Test cricket the here isn't finished now. It will be after they lose two Test matches in three and a half days. There's a bit of a thought experiment going on at the moment. Who would win a Test match out of West Indies T20 squad and West Indies actual Test squad, and whether the T20 squad would win it? But my, my point is that, like that. Um, if you go to, if you if you saw as much cricket in like London as you did in Antigua, Barbados, Grenada over here you think the sport was going unbelievably well in the UK like you land in the airports and cricket cricket is on the on the on the posters it's DJ Bravo selling car rentals you go outside and the roundabouts are named after Gary Sobers and whatever like if you if you got to Heathrow and it was Ben Stokes greeting you kind of as you arrived and you got to the first roundabout and it was the Alistair Cook roundabout you'd be like God, they love cricket here and so I would hope that if they really if they win and kind of recapture that imagination a bit and it'd be so much fun to be out here for a West Indies win. Thank you very much for watching Talk Sports Cricket YouTube channel, but please stay tuned to the channel over the next couple of weeks because we'll bring you loads and loads of content over the next couple of weeks from our studio. Maybe me and Cam might just get together on New Year's Day and record a podcast about so. our lives. Thanks for watching. The team back at base, you've absolutely smashed it. The Caribbean, goodness gracious me, you are someplace. I love you. Over and out. Peace out. And you know what, Cameron? England win the World Cup.
We're going to win the World Cup. It's been a tricky couple of months. We're ending on a high. Archer's back. Stokes is back. We're going to come round to the Caribbean. Cam, take us to the break uh, by singing the national anthem, though, in the remix version that they do it here. I want to find that song on Spotify. Quickly do it. Rally around the West Indies. Bat like we're never bat field like we're never. I really, really wish you hadn't made me do that. I'm sad. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app, and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.